Oh, let's add a custom villager to Minecraft. Alright, we find ourselves back in IntelliJ once more, and in this tutorial we're going to be adding a custom villager to Minecraft, highly anticipated tutorial once again. After I showed how you can add the custom traits to already existing villagers, a lot of people ask for custom villagers, and at first I was like, oh, that's probably going to be very complicated. However, it actually isn't that complicated. So in our tutorial mod package, we're going to make a new package called a villager. And inside of there, we're just going to need one singular class, and that's the mod villagers class. Now in here, we're actually going to break our sacred rule, and we're going to have two deferred registers. I know we're going pretty crazy tonight. <laughs> so it's going to be a public static final deferred register of type poi type. There you go. And this is going to be the poi underscore types. Now this is equal to a deferred register dot create, of course, forge registries dot poi types tutorial mod dot mod id and then a second deferred register which is going to be this time of type villager profession there you go and this is going to be the villager professions which is going to be equal to a deferred register dot create forge registries professions and then tutorial mod dot mod id there are two deferred registers and here we're actually going to have a another public static void register method of course with an i event bus called event bus and this one will actually say poi types dot register passing in the event bus, and then also villager professions dot register passing in the event bus. There you go. Before we forget this, let's call this at the very bottom here. So right below the mod entity types register method, it'll be the mod villagers dot register passing in the event bus. There you go. Oh, forgot a semicolon here. There you go. And then we should be fine. What do we need? Well, we need to register our poi type first and foremost. This is the point of interest type meaning that we have a certain point of interest where the villager gets its profession from, and then we also register the profession. So for us, this is going to look like the following. We're first of all going to make the poi type. So this is going to be a public static final registry object of poi type called the gem cutting poi. And this is going to be equal to poi types, or strangely enough, dot register. The name, name here is going to be gem cutting poi. That's going to be fine. And then a comma. We're going to need a supplier of a new poi type. There you go. It's already suggested. Once again, gem cutting poi as its name. And then afterwards, we want to call poi type dot get block states and then pass in the actual block where this point of interest is basically well from. In our case, we're going to choose the mod blocks dot gem cutting station dot get. And then after the second parentheses here, we want to pass in one and one. So I will quickly explain and we'll actually also take a look at this. So if I middle mouse my click on the poi type, we can actually see the different poi types right here. And we can then also actually see, well, what this all does, you know, the different poi types. And then we can even see what the ones here are. So you can clearly tell that most of them are basically one. The only other ones are, you know, there's a meeting one here. You can see that we have 32 free uh, tickets in this case. So this just has basically the built-in number of how many different villagers can take this spot. So you could, in theory, also, you know, have more here. And then the valid range, in this case, is also, uh, it should be the range. I'm not 100% sure if what one does in this case, because all of them are one except for the meeting spot, which is actually six. So there might be some, you know, different things in here. Highly recommend if you want to play around with this, play around with this a little bit and just be open to experimentation on that. But then we also need the villager profession, and that's going to be a public static final registry object of type villager profession. Who could have thought this? And this is the gem cutter, and this is going to be equal to the villager professions dot register, calling it the gem cutter. There you go. And then still in there, a new supplier of exactly this, namely a new villager profession, passing in the name once again, gem underscore cutter, passing in the gem cutting poi. So this is going to be the poi dot get. Uh, after immediately after they get comma a immutable set dot of comma immutable set dot of both of them empty actually and then last but not least a sound events sound events dot we're gonna take the villager work let's take the toolsmith or the weaponsmith let's take the let's take the weaponsmith that's gonna be fine there you go and that would be it now you might ask wait why are we making two immutable sets here with nothing in them. Well, let's take a look at the villager profession middle mouse button click and then middle mouse button click again. I believe here, there they are. So the register method, this is what we should look at. So then we can see what this does. And you can see the immutable sets right here 
are basically for things that they can, well, I mean, take into their inventory. So this one is the inventory one, the first one. And the second one is secondary job sites. So you can basically, well, define another block where they might work at. In this case, I am not 100% sure if there is any, uh, you know, type of additional thing you need to do if you have a, a secondary job site. So keep that in mind. But yeah, once again, we're not going to go too deep into detail. The vanilla code is all available to you. So I highly recommend checking this out. Now, this is actually all that we need to do in this class, except for one very, very important method. And this is extremely important. Now, this one I will copy over because it looks a little crazy. Now, this is, of course, all available to you in the description below, GitHub repository, an individual gist as well. You can see what we're basically trying here is we're trying to call the obfuscation reflection helper and trying to find a method, namely this register block states method in the POI class. So POI type class. So let's just middle mouse one click and actually search for it. And you can see this does exist. However, it is private. And this is kind of an issue, right? Because of course, if it's private, then we can't really do anything with it. And the idea here is that we're basically invoking this and then just, you know, making sure that our gem cutting POI here is properly registered. Now, if you have another POI, what you want to do is you want to call this again with your other POI right here. So this is basically how you have a second one. This should stay the same. Just this one changes right here should be fairly self-explanatory, actually. Now, this, very important also, needs to be called in the tutorial mod class inside of the FML common setup. Make sure that this is also in the onQueue work runnable here, mod villagers.register poise. And there you go. And if you have this, then everything should be working. All right, there's two more things in the assets that the first one is the translation. So for this, we actually want a translation. I'm just going to add it right here. It's going to be entity Minecraft villager tutorial mod gem cutter. So this name, of course, is the same as this name right here. So if those match, then you can basically, this is going to display the name inside of the trading GUI, basically. And then the question is also, where is the going to be the texture? So the texture is going to be in the textures folder entity. And then we're going to make a new directory called villager. And instead of here, I'm going to make a new directory called profession. And then I'm going to copy over the gem cutter PNG. Now, what you will find is that this PNG is just a, well, to be honest, it's just a recolored one from the Armorsmith. I have taken this from the external libraries, of course, which are always available to you in the net right here, net client like extra 118.2 or whatever your version is assets, Minecraft textures in the entity and then at the very bottom, almost at the very bottom, the villager profession. And here is the armor. So you can see it pretty much is the exact same thing, just recolored. And you can also take the other ones. Making a really good looking, you know, villager texture right here, actually harder than you might think. So, you know, highly suggest play around with this as well. But this is where it has to be placed. But there's one last thing that we might want. So this is going to be how you can add the custom traits. Well, we're just going to use the same method that we used for the already existing villagers. And we're just going to copy one of the if statements here. And we're just going to say mod villagers dot the gem cutter dot get. And that is it. And now we can basically add stuff to the gem cutter as well. So we're just going to say villager level one in this case. Let's say, sure, let's say five emeralds. And what we're going to get for this is actually just a citrine, let's say, something like that. And then we're going to get one citrine. So this is how easy this is then, you know, should be fairly self-explanatory at this point. Uh, I've explained this in the uh, custom trades one as well. So you can just add stuff to it and you should be fine. Well, for completion's sake, let's see if it works. All right, we found ourselves in Minecraft and we already have a villager right here. So let's see if I set down the gem cutting station, you know, you know near him. And there we go. He now is a gem cutter. And you can also see that our trade here is added successfully as well. So we can get it and then we are fine. Now, of course, it's, you know, the actual villager is not going to have any other trades here that it's going to add at level two. But once again, this can just be added in the, you know, villager trades event very easily added as well. So this is pretty much how easy it is to add a, another villager to Minecraft. Brandon, that would be it for this tutorial right here. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new. If you did, I would very much appreciate a like. And don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials just like this one. Many thanks also to my lovely Patreon supporters for supporting the channel. And I will see you all in the next video. Oh, yeah.